Welcome to Storytime. Miss Nicole and Brary Bear here. It's a sunny day, so we have our shades on. Yeah, these are shades, also known as sunglasses. Yes, today is Groundhog Day as well. We heard that the, the groundhog came out of his winter burrow and saw his shadow. That means it's a sunny day and he got to see a shadow. Therefore, it's going to stay winter for six more weeks. Oh, I hope we get more snow. Last couple of weeks, we've had some flurries. Prairie's winter coat is nice and thick. Yes, some animals have furry coats that get very thick in the winter to keep their body warm. So since Brary's fur coat is nice and thick now for winter, he let me borrow his warm knitted sweater because I don't have fur. I do have hair, oh, but I don't have fur. So, right, you too don't have fur. You have to wear a warm coat too and mittens and a scarf and a hat and definitely socks inside of your boots. Oh, someday we'll have a beautiful snow day. Oh, and I wonder if Brary has brought a book for us in his... Backpack. Did you, buddy? That's his job, you know, to pick out books. Oh, it's a special book, he tells me. It's a very old book. Oh, I see. There's an old stamp inside of the Carnegie Library in Paducah, Kentucky. Did you know that our very first library in Paducah was not here at this location at 555 Washington Street? No, it was over on the corner of Broadway and 9th Street. In fact, if you go to our YouTube channel, look up Postcards from Paducah, number five, our own Mr. Nathan did a short segment on the Carnegie Library's history. Yeah, that's where Brary's chair comes from. This chair is from that library. It's a very old chair. Um, but yes, this book is old. Brary, we have to be very careful. The binding is kind of loose. Oh, I'll be gentle and share it with the kids. Here we go. The Snowy Day Words and Illustrations by Ezra Jack Keats Whee! One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this. He walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks. And he found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So, he made a smiling snowman, and he made angels. He pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow and slid 
all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow and another and still another. He packed it round and firm and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went to his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. <laughs> and he thought and thought and thought about them, all his adventures today. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. Well, he felt very sad. Hmm. Where did it go? While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. The new snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. The end. What a precious story that was. Thank you, Brary, for picking out the snowy day. Oh, beautiful illustrations by Ezra Jack Keats. It looked like a lot of collage, paper collage. Okay. Oh, Brary wanted me to ask you, do you remember what happened to the little boy in the story when he put a snowball in his pocket and after he took his bath, he went to check and it was all gone. What happened to the snowball? <laughs> it melted, didn't it? He thought it disappeared, but it just turned to a wet pocket. Yeah, we can't bring snow inside the house. It definitely will just melt. So did you notice that snow is actually frozen water or frozen rain? Mm-hmm. Rain's pretty magical. Oh. Yes, it's time for memory lane. Here's your glasses. Oh, we have to take these glasses off first. There you go, buddy. And these on. Let's go down memory lane. Look at the book, The Mitten. This is written and illustrated by Jan Brett. Beautiful illustrations. The Mitten. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit the mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you have your snow white mittens. Mm. So off Nikki went and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Mm. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten, and he burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm, just the right size, so he decided to stay. There he is, nice and warm. All bundled up. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment just to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled feet first. The mole didn't mind, but he didn't think there was room for both of them, but he moved over when he saw his big kickers. The mole moved over. So how many animals do we have now in the mitten? I want you to keep up with it. Next, a hedgehog came snuffing along. 
Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. Oh. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. How many animals are in the mitten? Thank you. If you know it, shout it out. How many? Three. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's shiny talons, they quickly let him in. Mm, it's getting, it's getting tight in here. If you know how many animals are in the mitten, shout it out. Good. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl were not pleased. There was no room, but when they saw his diggers, they gave in. They gave him the thumb. How many animals? are in the mitten. Oh, this mitten It's getting stretched. Stretch. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. How many animals are in the mitten? You are such good counters, you're keeping up with it. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten, all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as they could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? I wouldn't argue mm. with a bear, would you, Miss Cherry? No, I wouldn't. The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size. Oh my goodness, how many animals are... Wow. There are seven. I can hardly believe it. Baba's good knitting held fast. <sighs> There's seven. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wiggled into one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. <laughs> The big bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. All directions. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was his lost mitten, silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. But there's something a little different about his mittens now. What has happened? Is one bigger than the other now? It stretched out of shape, didn't it? <laughs> Good knitting. It really held fast. Now, as we place the animals, I want you to tell me what they are. What is this one? Hedgehog. Someone said it. What is this one? A rabbit. What is this one? 
It's an owl, sort of like our Barney, but not really a different owl. There we go. The big bear, yes, yes. Badger, he looks a lot like a skunk, but he doesn't have that skunk tail, and he has little sharp diggers. That's the badger. What's this one? Oh, and he has a beautiful tail, doesn't he? They were afraid of his sharp teeth, yes. so they made room. And this one was the first one, actually, in the story. Mole. And this one was the last one in the story. A mouse. Give yourselves a hand for getting all of the animals. Good job. Right. Very Oh, what a cool memory lane, kids. Did you count? That was called addition. We got to number eight. All those animals counted to eight. And then when the big bear sneezed, they all went everywhere and zero were left. So eight minus eight equals zero. You did some subtraction as well. Yes, you did. So proud of you, kids. All those animals out there we're trying to find a place warm and cozy for winter time. Mm -hmm. That's called hibernation. They didn't get to survive very long in that mitten, though, did they? Whack, 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 whack. Oh, that reminds me of a song, Dr. Duck, about hibernation. Would you like to hear it, children? It's to the tune Frère Jocca. Do you know that song, Brother John? Dr. Duck, you sing along. Repeat after me. All right, honey, I can follow instructions. Go ahead. <clears throat> hibernation, hibernation, all winter long, all winter long. Staying warm and cozy, staying warm and cozy till spring is sprung till spring is sprung. Did you sing along, kids? Oh, that's a cool song, Lady Dragon. Thank you. That's right. Hibernation is where the animals stay warm and cozy till springtime comes. Well, that's the end of story time. Can I get three cheers for story time? Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. See you next week. Bye-bye.